Hello, dear Amos Professional Community. I decided to create this small video to talk about my future development on Amos Professional. Those who have been following the project for some time know that I have accomplished a good part of what will be added to Amos Professional to support the Aga chipset. What actually remains to do concerns rainbows, sprite, and ultra iOS resolution. But now that it makes approximately one full year that I work on Amos Professional source code, I can tell you that I have acquired some expertise on many components of the engine. This simply means that uh, I can know, uh, I think I can know do, do things that would have been difficult for me to do one year ago. This also means that I can estimate a new approach to the evolution I want to bring to the most professional branch I maintain. Before revealing you more about what I plan for the year 2021, I'd like to show you something. Just look at the small box that appears in the window. You can see there the Apollo OS on the Vampire V4 standalone card. Now I launch a most personal on it, the EGA version of course. And you can see that the editor fully works and when I open source code and I run it, it runs using the EGA chipset. So we can tell that our most professional AGA is compatible with the Vampire v standalone board. Now you can also see our most professional 3.1.4 from Hyperion Testament on the same Vampire v standalone board. The most professional AGA AD launch correctly. And you can see that source code run correctly. For those that own the Vampire v stand alone, I, you can test the latest release available on the Git to verify that it works. The link for the Git is available in this video description just above. So that means that a most professional AGA can run on more than one configuration. It can run on true Amiga Classic owning a GAS chipset. It can run on Amiga emulator like WinUA correctly configured with a gas chipset support and it can run on Vampire V4 stand alone with Apollo OS on or Amiga OS 3.1.4. Uh, I didn't test Coffin but uh, it should work too theoretically. Supporting the specificity of several configurations without a solid basement is hazardous and time consuming. That's why I decided to evaluate a new approach for the future of the Amos Production Branch as support. 
Then, in the objective to support more 68K compatibles Amiga configuration, I decided to review entirely my change on the Amos Personal original source code. So, here is the incomplete roadmap for the year 2021. This roadmap is subject to evaluate, to change, but you should typically view the group what group of what should be. First step. We'll start from the original almost rational source code and make it more flexible. Uh, this means that uh, Amos.library was considered by the Amos Personal author as a graphic library for Amos Personal. The problem is that some methods available in the Amos Pro.lib and in the Compact.lib are dependent on the graphic chipset. Uh, compacting a picture depends uh, on the amount of biplane, on the amount of colors of biplane, um, the screen. Uh, low DFF depends also all the available display format output, the maximum color, ham uh, mode, ham6 or ham8. So I have to move all these methods from their original, original place to the amos.library. So the amos.library will really become the graphics library for Amos Professional. This step is really important for what will follow. I will also have to update colors method, like uh, color, like rainbow and other, to support multiple color format, like uh, RGB 12 bits, RGB 24 bits, RGB 16 bits, and as input mode, and output them with the correct chipset format. Uh, I will maybe I didn't emit yet mode, 60 byte mode with a flag, but if it lower performance, I will not do this. I will do this only if I don't lose performance. I will also update the internal and most professional structure to be compatible with all the configuration I'm planning to support. This is AGA and maybe SEGA. Uh, this means, for example, that I must put uh, 10 bit planes in the structure, even if in ECS we only use six of them, and on EGE we use only eight of them. The Sega chipset allowing 10 bit planes, I must cover the maximum range. The make this, this allow us to be sure that the same structure can be used for all configuration. It is important for multi platform. Executable. Uh, so I will then modify uh, the internal source code of a most professional setup to open a new library. What was the amos.library will become Amos Pro Unity ECS library. Uh, the objective of uh, not um, taking the original Amos.library is to be sure that all compiled programs that use Amos library will continue to run. I will also update configuration files, interpreter, editor to use the new Amos Pro Unity configuration field instead of the older one. This was the second step. The third step. I will re-implement all the AGA methods I've done in a new Amos Pro Unity AGA.library. With this, I can modify Amos Professional setup to detect the AGA chipset and select which library it will use and open. Amos Pro Unity ECS.library if the program runs on an ECS configuration and Amos Pro Unity AGA.library if the program runs on a configuration that on the EGA chipset. The fourth step, complete the EGA support, adding rainbow support using the new color data support. This means that, in fact, my objective is that you, in the future, when you use Amos Pro Unity, 
uh, you always use 24 bits color value even when you are on ECS because this ensure that uh, whatever the configuration you will run the program it will use the maximum of sensitivity in color range I will also add the support for Aga Sprite and support for Ultra IRS resolution the free uh, actually remaining support to do on the Aga chipset. The first step, implement the Saga support inside an Amos Pro Unity Saga library. This step is actually unsure because after some discussion with Gunnar, it appears that uh, at this time there is no official chipset documentation concerning the Saga chipset. You can have some information from the Apollo team website, but not detailed and definitive one. Uh, with the fact that a most rational use direct chipset hits to achieve graphics and audio, and that there is no official detail on bit composing the Saga chipset register, I cannot tell you what I would be able to add as support for the Saga chipset. I really hope that the Apollo team will be able to suddenly deliver us an official documentation of what is actually available on the Saga chipset. With this information, with this all this, I will be able to modify the most rational setup to detect the Saga chipset. And then at this point, this step of the development, the setup will be able to detect if you are in ACS mode and then open the MOS Pro Unity ECS library. If you are on AGA chipset, it will open the MOS Pro Unity AGA library. And if you are a vampire, we can stand alone with Saga chipset. It will be able to open the MOS Pro Unity Saga library. This means that MOS Professional will auto detect the chipset and enable the functionality of it. It's best if you want to add the support for the free configuration, ECS, AGA, Saga, to develop directly on the Saga, because you answer, you are sure you have the maximum of capability, and you can run the maximum, medium, or low ECS by modifying the code. So you are sure you can do a program that is compatible with the free chipset. You may say, wow, you plan several things for most personnel. And I hope that you like this new roadmap for the next year. But this roadmap is incomplete without the last step. This sixth step, this one is the cherry on the cake for all a most professional developer. It is in some sort the goal I want to rich with this new roadmap. This would make a most personal being really interesting for 68k compatible Amiga development. I will add some new methods to make you know during runtime on which configuration you are. ECS, AGA or SAGA and maybe later more configuration we know. The main objective is to allow the developer to have one Amos professional compiled executable of the software or game you develop to be able to run on the three different chipset and being capable to take benefit of the difference of each of them. A simple example. If you are on ECS, you load in your program eight color graphics and set up dual playfield on two screens holding each eight colors. You can condition your program to do this, and the rest of the program will use these graphics independently on the amount of colors. If you are on EGA, you load the 16 color version of the graphics and set up dual playfield on those two screens holding each 16 colors. If you are on the Saga, 
you load like for again the 16 color version of graphics but you can also set up a chunky screen displayed behind behind the dual play field by simply condition your source code you can make a game run differently on each supported chipset in this example for example once you have done the setup your program will simply have to display bob pass bomb and run normally whatever the amount of color available to screen and you have just to make a checking that uh, if you are on the Sega support you update the chunky screen with what you want to put in this make one a most professional executable being able to run on three different chipset and being able to use the specificity of each of them makes your game take benefit of the maximum it can take on the configuration you are. Here is the main goal I want to reach with this new roadmap. I hope you like this news. I hope that uh, uh, you will continue support the project by liking this video liking the channel to be sure you will get the latest news and if you want to support the project you can also make a small donation uh, directly on my paypal account that is linked in the description of this video uh, don't forget that acquiring a vampire v4 standalone board uh, is not free development time cost really much time so i hope you will enjoy all I have already done for a most personal and what I will continue to do. See you again.